Hey there and welcome to DIY Projects with Pete. Today we're going to build a queen size Murphy bed. Now this works well for when you do have guests, you'll have a good size bed. And when you want to free up some space and use it as an office or maybe an exercise room, when you don't have those visitors, you're going to be able to do so. This is great for making your place a little bit more efficient. I'll show you how it works. You can pull this down. It comes down very easily. This folds down to make it level. Throw on a couple pillows and you're good to go. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and let's get to it. The first step was to research hardware options for this project and I ended up finding a Murphy bed kit online that included gas springs, project plans, and all the hardware to make it work. The kit was $300 and well worth it in my opinion. The wood and supplies for the project came in at about $400, so the total project cost was $700, and then I used the mattress from the old guest bed. The cheapest pre-made units that still need assembly are in the $1,300 range on Amazon, and you can easily spend around $2,500. So I feel like your investment in time and money will be worth it. To be able to you know, free up space and use the room as an office, exercise area, or even a playroom for the kids. And since you can customize the bed with extra shelves, nightstands, and the finish of your choice, you'll be able to get exactly what you want. I went down to my hardware store and loaded a cart with some cabinet grade plywood, some 1x2 boards, edge banding, and some other supplies. For more information about the supplies, materials, and cost to build this project, you can check out the detailed tutorial at DIYPete.com forward slash murphybed. And you can find the link to the Murphy Bed Hardware Kit in the description below. I set up a few saw horses to build a temporary outfeed surface for the table saw since I'm working with larger sheets to start with. Now the bulk of the bed is made from 3 quarter inch plywood. The two face panels are the largest pieces and they'll form the front of the Murphy Bed cabinet. The two bed cabinet verticals forming the side of the cabinet are the next largest boards. Then you have the bed header, headboard, side rails, foot and head rails that are also made of plywood. Take your time to ensure nice, straight cuts. Quarter inch plywood is used on the inside of the bed frame on top of the frame struts and is ultimately what the mattress sits on. If you don't have a table saw, the cuts can be done using a circular saw along with a good saw guide to get an accurate cut. The more narrow boards can be cut to length on the miter saw. I had to flip a couple of the wider boards to make it all the way through though. Here's a look at the various rails being cut, followed by the struts from the 1x2 boards. I'm using a 12 inch sliding compound miter saw that's battery powered. Now it still has all the power that my corded saw has, but it's wire free and it has the portability to go anywhere. I'm actually going to be residing my home this summer, so I thought it'd be a worthwhile investment. A quick sanding of the edges with an orbital sander and 220 grit sandpaper will help clean up the rough areas. The next step was to assemble the frame struts. Now the struts are made in an L shape by attaching one board to another. Pre-drill holes along the length of the board, approximately every 8 inches or so. Then run a bead of glue along the other board, line them up, and insert a 1.5 inch number 8 screw at each hole location. Repeat these steps for all five of the frame struts if you're building the queen size Murphy bed like I am. If you're building a different size Murphy bed according to the create a bed plans, your dimensions will vary. However, the overall process will be very similar. Place the outside perimeter pieces of the wood bed frame on a flat surface. Drill two pilot holes through the frame side and into the strut. Add some wood glue at each connection and then attach using two inch long number eight screws. One screw will go into the vertical portion of the strut and the other will go into the horizontal part. The remaining struts will be spaced evenly and connected in the same fashion. All of these boards are referred to at most stores as 1x2 boards, which is their nominal dimension, but their actual size is 1.5 inches wide by 3 quarter inches thick. Next, we'll move on to the side rails. Lay them on a flat surface and determine which side of the plywood looks nicer and should face outward. Also decide which will be the left and right side rails. Then place the nice side against the surface with the top edge facing out. We'll cut out the provided template that will help us get a rounded top corner and placement for the pivoting leg bracket. Use a pencil to draw the rounded corner. And a nail works great for marking the location where that 5 8 inch diameter hole will go. The measurements are also provided if you'd prefer to use a tape measure and pen to mark the location. Follow the rounded line with a jigsaw to create the curved top corner of the rail. Then lightly sand the end of the board, but don't round over the edges since we'll be applying edge banding in a later step and need the surface to be flat. Use a Forstner bit to drill a 5 8 inch hole at the mark we just made. The hole should be a half inch deep 
and I marked the bit with tape to show where the half inch depth would be to make sure I didn't go too deep with the bit. The plywood is three quarters inches thick, so you do need to be a little careful to make sure you don't go through the other side. Test fit the leg to check that it fits and that the peg goes in all the way. Use a square to line it up and then mark each hole location where we'll be inserting screws. Then clamp the rail to a scrap board to prevent tear out when drilling all the way through the rail and use a one quarter inch bit and drill all the way through the wood for the two bottom holes. Insert two T-nuts from the outer side of the rail and then screw the machine screws in from the other side. Use the black screws in the two remaining upper holes of the bracket plate. Repeat the same process on the other side rail for the leg bracket hardware. The legs will eventually be connected to each other with a rail and the legs are going to help ensure that the bed sits level. Do a light sanding along the rail where the edge banding will go and then begin applying the edge banding using a normal household iron. The heat's going to melt the adhesive on the banding and cause it to stick to the plywood edge. Use firm pressure and slowly move from one end to the other. Apply the banding to the rounded corner and then use a roller or a block of wood to help ensure the banding gets a solid connection to the plywood. Now this project involves adding edge banding to all the exposed plywood edges that are going to be visible. So you'll get a good amount of practice doing this and you'll get the hang of it quickly. An edge banding trimmer can make the process of removing all the excess go pretty quickly, but a sharp razor blade will work if you don't have one. If you have any spots where the banding isn't adhering, you can run the iron over it again. The next step was to make the leg support rail. To do this, I ripped a pine board on a table saw down to three quarter inch by three quarter inches in size. Next, find the center and drill a one and a half inch deep hole in each end using a quarter inch bit. This rail will later connect each leg. Lay the side rails on the table so the outside is facing up and the rounded corners are toward the center. I measured in nine inches from the other end of the rail and four inches up from the bottom, then drilled a one inch hole through the entire board. There is a template to do this if you'd prefer to use it. Put a scrap piece of wood under the rail to prevent tear out and to protect your work surface while drilling each hole. This is where the female pivot hardware will be placed. I then measured seven and a half inches from the center of the hole, drew a line, put a 5 16 inch spacer in place, and then lined up the lower ball stud hardware. The center holes should match up with the line and the spacer goes between the top of the rail and the ball stud. Square up the plate, Mark the hole locations and then use a quarter inch bit to drill three holes all the way through the wood. Insert three T-nuts, then use the three machine screws to attach it. Finally, put a black screw in the two remaining holes. Repeat the same process for the other side rail. You can see the 5 16 inch spacer simply helps with the placement of the lower ball stud plate. Next, slide the pivot plate into the hole and attach it using the silver screws. You'll attach a plate to the outside of each rail. That's all the hardware that's going on the rails. Now you can remove it so we can do additional sanding and eventually paint, stain, or seal the wood. I used an orbital sander and 220 grit paper to sand away any pencil marks and to smooth rough edges and areas around the holes. Go ahead and place the inner wood frame back on the work surface. The foot rail and head rail will be attached to the inner wood frame next using one and a quarter inch long screws. First, you'll want to pre-drill one and a quarter inch deep holes and then insert five screws. Space them fairly evenly and the foot rail side should be flush with the bottom and side of the inner wood frame. The head rail will go on next and is attached similar to how the foot rail was. Flush up the bottom and sides, then clamp the head rail to the inner wood frame. Use five screws to connect it. Now we'll move on to adding the side rails. The end with the rounded corner will need to be flush with the outside of the foot rail and the other end of the side rail should come out pretty flush toward the head rail area. Pre-drill and insert one and a quarter inch long screws through the inner bed frame and into the side rail. You'll want to use two screws between each strut. Each end of the side rail will get tied into the foot or head rail using two of the two inch long screws. This will secure everything in place. Repeat this process and connect the other side rail. You'll find that the inner bed frame and rails all go together easily and it's a pretty straightforward process. I'd say the most time consuming part of this step is to do the measurements to make sure that the hardware is mounted in the correct location. Next we'll grab the two face panels and take a look to see which side of the panels looks the best. Orientate the nicest sides so that it will face outward when the cabinets assembled. 
Lay the panels with the best side facing down, and then prepare to add edge banding on three sides of each panel by giving the edges a light sanding. You won't need to add banding to the inner sides that butt up against each other. I typically cut the banding so it is an inch or two longer than I need, and then I'll trim the ends later with a sharp razor blade. Take your time to make sure the banding gets a strong and consistent bond along each side of the panel. Next, measure in one quarter inch from the left and right side of the overall panel that will become one large panel once the inner frame is added. Use a straight edge and draw a line with a pencil. Then lift the frame on the face panels and line it up with the quarter inch line you just drew. This will center it and you'll have the one quarter inch overlap on the left and right sides. The foot rail should be flush with the bottoms of the face panels. Next, trace around each of the four sections between the struts with a pencil, and this is going to make it easy to know where to put wood glue in a later step. Remove the frame and add wood glue between the pencil marks where the struts will be attached and around the perimeter of the face panels. Once the glue is applied, set the frame back on the face panels. The panels should butt up against each other tightly at the center, then attach the face panels to the frame using one and a quarter inch long wood screws. To ensure the panels go on square, I'd recommend adding a screw in the corner near the foot rail first, then add a screw at the foot rail near where the panels butt up against each other. Next, add a screw in the corner on the head rail side. Once those three screws are on each panel, you should have panels that are lined up properly and you can continue to add screws around the perimeter and each strut. Each strut should have screws placed evenly that are about six inches apart. Pre-drill and then work your way around the frame until it's secure and has a good solid feel. You can add a couple 2 inch screws through the inner wood frame's side if you'd like as well. I hadn't yet applied edge banding to the head rail and foot rail, so I added it to the top side first. I then applied two short pieces to the little bit of sides that were still exposed. The next big step is to work on the bed cabinet verticals. There was a sticker on one of the boards and I found that they peel off cleanly if you apply a little bit of heat. You can hit any remaining adhesive with an orbital sander. Then determine the best looking side so it will ultimately face outward once it's assembled. Lay the boards with the good side down and then measure in from each side to determine placement for the stopper. For the queen size bed, this is 6 inches from the top and then 7 and 3 8 inches from the front edge. Drill a 5 16 inch diameter hole that's about a half inch deep. Stick the bed stop pin in the hole and secure it in place with a black screw. And repeat the same process for that second vertical. Next, measure in for the upper piston plate with the ball stud that the top of the gas spring will eventually connect to. This will be 30 and 3 quarters inches from the bottom of the board and 10 inches in from the front. Drill a 5 8 inch diameter hole that is 1 half inch deep. The back of the plate has a nut on it and this will fit into the hole that was just drilled. Secure it in place with four black screws and then drill a hole all the way through the board for the center hole which will use a T-nut from the other side and then a machine screw to secure it. I used a smaller bit to help get the hole centered as best as possible and then came back from the other side with a quarter inch bit before adding the T-nut and machine screw. Next we'll add the male pivot plate to each cabinet vertical. Measure up 11 and 3 quarters inches from the bottom and 4 and 3 quarters inches in from the front. Then drill a 5 8 inch diameter hole that's a half inch deep. Set the hardware in place pre-drill and then insert two silver screws in the lower holes. I again used a smaller bit first for the upper holes and then from the other side I came back with a quarter inch bit before inserting two T-nuts and machine screws in the two upper holes of each plate. Make sure to apply edge banding to the front of the cabinet verticals if you haven't already and then set them aside. I applied edge banding to the bed's headboard along the top and bottom sides. I also applied banding to the bottom side of the front and rear rail that will connect to the header board. Add a little glue to the header board and then lay it down on the table over some half inch spacers that will prop it up. Attach the rear header rail using two inch long screws. Make sure to pre-drill before inserting the screws and you'll want to space the screws about every six inches and they'll go in at about seven eighths of an inch up from the lower edge of the rear rail. Then attach the front rail which will face out towards the room. Glue and then use two inch finish nails. I used an air nailer and 18 gauge nails but a hammer and nails would work just as well. Next, add the mounting cleats to each end using glue and two inch screws from the top. These mounting cleats will provide a way to form a solid connection between the header and the cabinet verticals in a later step. You can fill the nail holes with wood putty if you'd like. Now would be a good time to figure out placement for the handles and to add them to the face panel if you know the exact location where you'd like them to go. 
I hadn't figured out my trim layout yet, so I waited until later to add them. But if you use the trim layout I did, the center point of the top panels would be 11 and 1 16th inch from the top of the plywood and 16 and 7 8 inches in from the left side. Here's an overall view of the design I decided on for the face panel. The next step is going to be to add a finish to your bed. Start by removing all the hardware and then sand the boards as necessary. I used 220 grit sandpaper and before applying a finish you'll want to wipe down the surfaces to remove any dust. If you plan on staining your Murphy bed, I'd recommend using a wood conditioner before applying the stain to help it go on more even and to reduce blotches. I wiped the conditioner on all the surfaces I planned to stain and if you'd prefer to paint your Murphy bed that's another great option to customize your furniture. I always recommend testing the stain on a scrap board to make sure you like the color. You could also test the stains on the inner side of the plywood since it's never going to be seen. I ended up mixing special walnut and Puritan pine stains from Minwax to get a custom shade. I applied two coats of stain to my project and I was really happy with the color. Let the stain dry according to the manufacturer's instructions and then I'd recommend sealing the wood. I used a quick drying spray urethane but I'd actually recommend using a brush on urethane for better protection and to minimize fumes. Give the wood a few days to dry and air out before bringing it into your home. Prepare the room by removing the baseboard trim along the wall the bed will be attached to. If you'd prefer not to remove the baseboard, you can custom cut the cabinet verticals to fit around the baseboard. Then move all the parts to the room where the bed will be installed. The cabinet verticals, header, and headboard are easy to move, but the actual bed frame is pretty heavy and best if moved with two people. I used a moving blanket to slide it on once it was out of my shop and up the steps. We'll start by putting the hardware back on the rails. First, put in the two T-nuts and then reattach each leg with two machine screws and two black screws. Then grab the leg support rail and connect it to each leg using the supplied hex screws. Push the pivot plate into the hole in the side rail and attach using the four silver screws. Connect the lower ball stud plate using the three T-nuts, three machine screws, and two black screws. Next, add the hardware on the cabinet vertical. We'll start with the male pivot plate. Use two T-nuts in the top holes and two machine screws. Then use two regular silver screws in the lower two holes. The upper ball stud plate gets attached with four black screws and a T-nut and machine screw through the center hole. My buddy Jake stopped over Saturday afternoon to help with the rest of the install. He and his wife are planning to do a queen-sized Murphy bed for their home, so he wanted to come check out the process and see how it all goes together. Position the cabinet vertical on its side, put a plastic spacer onto the pivot bar, and then slide the pivot bar into the pivot hole in the bed frame. Snap the E-clip in the groove on each pivot bar. If you already attached the handles to the face frame, now would be a good time to install the quarter inch plywood. However, I attached mine later since I was still figuring out how I wanted to trim out the face panel. Measure from the end of the cabinet vertical and put a mark at 15 inches, 18 inches, and 28 inches. The 15 inch mark will line up with the bottom of the headboard. Drill a pilot hole in the board at the 18 inch and 28 inch mark on each side. Grab the headboard and hold it in place while you attach it with two inch wood screws through the pilot holes on each side. Rotate the cabinet verticals and then install the bed's header. Use clamps to hold it in place on each side. Now the header rail should be flush with the top of the cabinet verticals and the header side with the finish nails should face out toward the room. Slowly lift the bed frame to check that the gap between the frame and the header is fairly even and if needed you could adjust the header slightly to improve the gap. Then carefully lower the bed frame back down. Use a ladder or step stool so you can climb up and install the header. Pre-drill four holes on each end from the inside cleat of the header then attach using four screws on each end. Do not use wood glue for these connections so that it can be disassembled in case the bed ever needs to be moved. Make sure the bed is a couple feet away from the wall so you have room to work and slowly lift the bed frame. The bed frame will need to be pushed in past the front of the cabinet verticals and at an angle so the gas springs can go on easily. Jake attached the first gas spring at the lower ball stud and then at the upper ball stud. I attached the other one using the same technique. Now that the springs are attached, it will take a bit more strength to pull out the frame so you have room to mount the stoppers. We used a scrap piece of 1x4 board at each top corner to prop the door open and make it easier to install the stoppers. Fit the stopper pin in the hole and secure using a black screw. Since the handles aren't installed yet, 
I made a temporary pull so we could still open the bed frame. The next step is to secure the cabinet frame to the wall. Use a stud finder and mark each stud. Wood studs are commonly spaced 16 inches on center. Now, if you have a brick wall or another type of wall, you can still attach the bed to it, but you'll most likely use a little bit different technique. Then move the cabinet flush against the wall and use three inch long wood screws to attach it at each stud. Attaching it to four studs with a screw in each stud is recommended. I also put a couple screws in the lower portion of the headboard to help square up the overall unit a bit and for a little extra stability. Now you don't have to add trim if you don't want to, but I did want to jazz it up a bit more. We cut a 1x6 board to size and mitered each end with 45 degree cuts and then attached it with three finish nails to each cabinet vertical. Make sure you don't attach it to the face panel since the panel is going to rotate. The baseboard wraps around each side of the unit as well and it has a 90 degree cut against the wall. Attach a mitered 1x6 to the header and cabinet verticals. The bottom of the 1x6 should be flush with the bottom of the header so there is still a gap between it and the face panel. The trim should be flush with the side of the face panel. The top of the trim will be flush with the top of the face panel to maintain the gap between the header. And there will be about a one inch space between the bottom of the trim board and the baseboard to allow the bed frame to be able to pivot still. I added a center board to cover where the two face panels come together and then evenly spaced the boards on the left and right side to form four panels on each side of the center board. You can find the layout and measurements to easily space them in my post on my website, which is linked to in the description. The trim is all attached using one and a quarter inch brad nails. I centered the pole handles, leveled, marked where to drill, and then made holes to mount them. I then pulled down the bed frame so I could screw the hardware in from the back. Your cabinet hardware will come with directions on how to install it if you have any questions. I have a diagram in the article on my site with the placement locations for the handles in case you're doing the same layout and would like to add the pull handles earlier in the build. Once the handles are installed, you can add the quarter inch plywood. I grabbed a few barbell weights to hold the bed frame down while adding it. Use short screws to attach the plywood to the inner bed frame side and struts. Make sure you have enough screws so the plywood is tight and secure. Now that both pieces are in and fastened, we can add the elastic straps that will hold the mattress in place. Measure 16 inches from each corner in the two directions and put a mark. Lay out the elastic diagonally and put a short screw through the elastic at each 16 inch mark to secure it to the bed frame. Then put a mattress that's 12 inches or thinner onto the frame and pull the elastic over the two corners to hold it in place. Put some baseboard trim back up and then try out your new Murphy bed and check out how efficient your new space is going to be. All right, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed today's project. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. For more information, you can check out DIYPete.com forward slash Murphybed. And don't forget to comment below and let me know your thoughts. Thanks again for watching and cheers from Montana.